I want to fully admit up front that I usually go against the grain of the internet and not ship two female characters who show the slightest bit of friendly affection towards each other. But when I saw the previews for when Marnie was there, I totally thought this was a movie about girls discovering they were lesbians. But that was such a bad read of the preview and shame on me for stereotyping. But also shame on whoever made the trailer for making it seem that way too. I mean, really, you show two girls dancing and saying I love you back and forth a thousand times. What am I supposed to think? Anyways, that's not really important here and I owe a little shout out to Rachel Wilson along with everyone else who's been requesting this video for months now. I will give you this one warning not to watch this video if you haven't seen the movie yet because I am spoiling everything. And I know there's a book this movie was based on but be realistic. Things get so drastically changed in a movie that you typically cannot compare it with the book anymore. So whatever the book says doesn't matter when evaluating the film! Quit leaving comments complaining, you booktivists! But there is a glaring question that comes up while watching when Marnie was there, and that's what is actually going on when the girls meet. Is Marnie a ghost? Is Anna just imagining things? What's the deal? Well, my take on this is that sort of both things are happening. At the end of the film, we know that Anna is Marnie's grandmother granddaughter and that Marnie had told a toddler version of Anna all these stories about the house. We also usually see that Anna is waking up after having an experience with Marnie and even though we don't always see Anna fall asleep first, she could have passed out at any point really. Anna could even have a sleeping disorder or some severe problem with sleepwalking judging just by some of the locations she's found. Just saying it's not really normal to be found on the side of the road as sleep, nor is it safe. So it is very possible that Anna was just dreaming of the stories her grandmother passed down because seeing the mansion in the marsh in person triggered the memories in Anna's mind. But there's also a few issues with this. For starters, it's unlikely that Anna knew exactly what Marnie looked like as a child. Anna met Marnie as an older lady with graying hair, and even though young Anna had a doll that looked strikingly like Marnie as a kid, so Anna could have filled in the visual gaps with the doll, except that other characters, like Hisako, confirm that Anna's drawings look identical to the real Marnie. There's also some things that I'm pretty confident Grandma Marnie never shared, like how the maids and nanny tortured her. I mean, she may have mentioned an incident or two in passing, but it seems like a really bizarre detail to talk about your hair getting yanked to a preschool age girl. Plus, Marnie Marnie says some things that don't make sense for a dream, like she can't go very far from the house, she has to go now, and that she wants to know all about Anna's life. Not to mention the repeated conversation about how their meetings had to be a secret and how much Marnie loved Anna. Not to mention, not to mention, how panicked Marnie seems when Anna slips away back into her own reality. I don't think that was all representational of Anna giving herself what she needed to heal and move on in life life because, well, Anna hated herself so much at that point that I don't think she could even imagine someone who liked her. And Marnie's reaction when she thought Kazuhiko had arrived versus realizing it was Anna. I mean, Marnie leaps up and hugs Anna, clearly showing a stronger affection towards her. Anna would not envision that for herself, which that is the most heartbreaking thing about this whole story. Anna's foster mother absolutely adored her. Her, which is a big deal in Japan because blood ties are everything and most people won't adopt an unrelated child or babies that are mixed race because remember Anna is one-fourth English European American? It's not really clear but she is a quarter white and even if we dismiss the mother figure and take her for granted all kinds of other people loved and liked Anna but because she was hurting and she thought so bad badly of herself, she couldn't accept the idea of someone else caring about her. And how could she when her extended blood relatives didn't even care enough about her to take her after Marnie died? But that's also why Marnie probably saved Anna's life. Because she ran in as this beautiful, perfect symbol of a young girl and basically said, I think you're amazing, Anna, and I'm happy to know you. So being worthy to somebody who looks perfect like Marnie and being Marnie's number 
number one person, it really helped Anna to not feel like unwanted trash that got abandoned at the orphanage. So Marnie couldn't be just a fractured memory coming to the surface because Marnie had so many restrictions and a very focused plan on how to treat Anna. And I think the diary helps to prove that notion. Isn't it weird that the diary found hidden behind Marnie's old bookshelf is retelling the exact same stories that Anna is visiting? Well, bear with me here, but let's talk about a horcrux. Okay, not like in Harry Potter where it's associated with evil, but from the origin of the horcrux, which is part of a Slavic mythology. The story goes that someone evaded death by trapping his soul in the eye of a needle, which was inside an egg that was in a duck, in a rabbit, for some reason, in an iron chest in the ground. If you open the chest, the animals would get out, and if the egg or needle broke, the man would die. I think Marnie's diary had a similar effect. It let Marnie's spirit sort of attach itself to the house because her writings, i.e. a piece of her soul, i.e. i.e. a type of horcrux, was hidden away in there. So that's why a young Marnie could appear in the house and make those specific events happen again in the mansion. It's because her written memory was controlling that. That's also why Marnie couldn't go very far away from the house because her ability to materialize hinged on the location of the book and what had been documented within it. So if Marnie didn't write about going to another town as a kid, she can't do it with Anna now. But then Sayaka's family moved in and started renovating the house, found the diary, and removed it. And that meant Marnie had to leave because she couldn't stabilize herself in current times any longer. Which explains why Marnie had to suddenly say goodbye after the silo event. That was right after Sayaka removed the missing pages of the diary from the house. Well, okay, it was either that or because the diary stopped there so Marnie couldn't recreate any other experiences to show Anna. I'm not sure. I mean, Marnie does come to wave goodbye at Anna while she's leaving, but that didn't require Marnie to recall or recreate any memories to do that. But I guess the diary would also go back in the house with Sayaka, so yeah, I don't know. It seemed to be out of luck that Anna happened to be in town and Marnie came flocking to her in a way that transcended time. Now again, maybe Marnie came to Anna as a peer because that's what Anna needed most. Or maybe it was because that was the only time Marnie could relive due to the limitations in her diary. But as we read in the diary, Marnie did dance with the flower girl, yet the flower girl didn't exist when Hisako retold the stories of Marnie's childhood. So it comes off like time travel really did happen to let the girls connect, and that positively impacted Marnie's adolescence as much as it did Anna's. It might be that the time travel only happened in Anna's sleep, like an astral projection kind of deal, but I do think it happened that they connected for real in real life sort of. Anna existed in Marnie's time independently, except in cases where Anna filled in roles for other people, like Kazuhiko, in which case time got all wibbly-wobbly and Marnie couldn't keep straight who she was interacting with. It's a common side effect of time travel, I imagine. At any rate, When Marnie Was There is a very sad, somber anime that is worth seeing with a giant box of tissues, but it was very difficult for me to watch as a former foster parent slash girl who grew up with zero self-esteem. It broke my heart in so many ways and was exactly what I needed at the same time. But as far as my theory, it might not be reality, but theories are more fun! Well, that's all I have for now, but this video's not quite over yet. I get a lot of comments that say, do a theory on this topic, but I've already done those theories. So please consider going to my main channel page and clicking on the video tab so that way you can see everything I've done. You will probably find a lot of things you like that you never even knew that I posted. I want to let you know that I also have two other channels, Say Halo Goodbye Gaming and The Family Family Vlogs. Thank you so much for watching and I hope you enjoyed enough to hit subscribe and share. I can use all the help I can get to let other people know that this channel exists. And if you made it this far, leave me a comment that says something like, hey, I made it to the end. And then let me know what kind of videos you want to see in the future. I can't make any promises, but the more people that request something, the more I can look into it. Okay, well, I love you. I'll see you in the next video.